Hey guys, Adam Caesar here. Uh, we took a week off last week, but we're back, and uh, today we're going to talk about three of the best new horror comics that I've read. Uh, I haven't read everything that's out, but these are just uh, three that are new and notable that I think everyone should kind of check out. If you've been out of comics for a little while, or if you don't read horror comics, these are definitely three that should be on your radar. All right, uh, so I've been trying to make this a weekly thing, talking to the camera, talking to my cell phone. Um, but last week I was in uh, Virginia for Scares That Care, and I hadn't uh, filmed an extra episode to kind of have a buffer one in there. And I was just exhausted. I mean, it was a really great weekend. A lot of friends, uh, a lot of hanging out, uh, a lot of selling books, a lot of talking to people, um, a lot of meet new people, meeting people I've only met online. Um, and a lot of karaoke. So I didn't have a voice for a little while, but now it's Thursday, we're back, I have a voice, I've rested a little bit. Um, we're gonna talk about uh, three new horror comic books that I think are pretty great. Um, but first, I wanna thank everyone who's gone to the Kindle Scout page and nominated uh, the con season. I even had these, uh, these little cards made up to hand out at the con. It was great. Uh, a lot of people were just pulling out their phones and voting right then. It's very easy if you have an Amazon account and if you wanna check out the book maybe for free. Um, yeah, go vote for it. It's still up for like another week. All right. We're entering the final days though. So thanks if you can. All right. So the first book is actually the, the oldest comic, uh, going, it's been going for a couple years now. I think they're up to like 15 or 16, uh, single issues like floppies. Uh, but I'm going to talk about the first trade paperback of Harrow County. Um, it's a really cool book. It's got a very, um, very kind of, cool, witchy aesthetic, very almost psychedelic, even though it's kind of based in, I think, I think the 20s. Uh, we're never actually given a time that this is based in. Uh, but it's the American South. Um, begins with, as all good stories begins, uh, townspeople uh, killing uh, a woman for witchcraft. Um, and like, they shoot her, they stab her, then they finally hang her, then they have to burn her because she kind of won't die. Because she's not like a theoretical witch, this isn't like the real world uh, witch hangings. She is an actual witch who is actually doing yeah, healing uh, witchcraft and uh, some black magic. But she of course says that she's going to curse the town. Um, and we open up uh, kind of 17, 18 years later uh, with a young girl, Emmy, who may or may not be uh, either the witch reincarnated, we're not sure, or the witch's kind of progeny. Um, but it's, it's her coming to terms with maybe her powers. It's just, this, this is just, this first tra trade looks a little thick, uh, but it is just the first four issues. So, uh, a lot of story, definitely worth picking up. I think it's like, it's like 10 bucks on Amazon, which is a lot cheaper than a lot of trades. Um, it's Dark Horse, uh, publishing. Um, the way I would pitch this to someone, if they were like, were thinking about it, it's kind of got that, you know, down south, southern gothic kind of Flannery O'Connor, um, Joe Lansdale, Mark Twain aesthetic, but meets Guillermo del Toro because I guess on the back they even call it a um, a Southern Gothic fairy tale. It does have that kind of heightened reality feel to it, um, but it is very very creepy. Uh, not necessarily gory, but some of the art is is, is beautiful, 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 and um, some of the panels are are very creepy. Some of the images there's a, there's like she finds a boy who doesn't have any skin, or she finds the skin of a boy who doesn't have any skin, and it can kind of talk, and it's like her little sidekick, kind of magic carpet sidekick. It's just some really cool imagery. Um, yeah, so Harrow County um, by Cullen Bunn and Tyler Crook is the artist. Um, really, really great. Pick it up. Switching gears a little bit, uh, the next uh, comic has only had one issue come out, and it just came out last week. It is mail order only, and it comes in this cool little package. Um, it says warning zombies inside and then may contain human flesh and that definitely won't get them in trouble with uh, the US Postal Service, I'm sure. Um, but this, I'm gonna do a little bit of an unboxing video even though I've already opened it and read it, um, so I'm cheating. Uh, but this is Ebon Press's uh, Zombie Number no. 1 uh, based on the Lucio Fulci film of the same name. Skews pretty close to it. Uh, it comes, you know, kind of uh, packed, sealed in here with packing peanuts. Um, it is just a single issue, but it has this, um, kind of like an LP, it has this protective sleeve around it. Uh, and it also comes with a little mini comic that's liner notes, actually, about the production of the book. Um, and a Fulci Lives bumper sticker. 
Um, I'm not sure 100% what the deal is because I haven't read the uh, the liner notes, but I guess maybe they have the rights from Full Shoes Estate because they're doing, Ebon Press is doing not only this first issue um, based on Zombie, they're also doing a Gates of Hell comic, and they're doing a few originals that are going to kind of uh, feature the Fulci brand name, I guess. Um, and again, it's very quick, like 27 you know, comic pages plus some back matter, like interview with Stephen Romano, the writer, um, and, and some extra art and stuff like that. It's a little bit of like a luxury item. If you're, not, if you're just reading this kind of for the story and the art, um, maybe it's a big ask because it is like $15, but they own, these are limited edition. Um, they only do a thousand of them. The first 250, um, which I wasn't quick enough to get, uh, come signed, uh, by Romano. It's, it's a very cool little collector's thing. I mean, I know most horror fans are going to love this. The fact that it's even really thin, it's a thin floppy issue, but it still kind of manages to have a spine. It's just a really like A plus production. I think it's very, very cool. It's a little too early to tell how how close it's going to skew um, to the film itself. It is great. We do have already some of the beginning, those famous shots of the, the sailboat coming into New York. Um, we do have that kind of replicated in here, uh, but there is some extra material and the writing is a little bit, uh, a little bit better. I mean, you're not kind of going from that, um, that kind of in translation um, dialogue. There is some kind of, some of the famous lines are, are, are in here, but um, it's a little bit expanded, a little bit smoothed out by Romano's uh, writing. And I, I, this is a really, really cool book. I, I'm, I'm definitely going to pick up the second one and, and we'll pick up The Gates of Hell and the other, the other stuff that Ebon has planned. It's pretty cool. The last book I'm going to talk about um, has been out for a while. Single issues have been coming out uh, for a little while. I don't exactly know what number they're up to, but the first trade paperback just came out. And this is going to sound crazy, but this is definitely my favorite of the three that I'm talking about. Um, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. And yes, like Sabrina the Teenage Witch, um, but not the original Archie Comics version and definitely not the uh, Melissa Joan Hart kind of WB show from back in uh, younger people's uh, days, but a, a kind of um, very serious, um, what if we took uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, uh, set it uh, in during when the stories were originally set in the 60s and kind of make a... Um, Dark Shadows meets Rosemary's Baby kind of soap opera out of it. It's incredible. I love this book. It's so good. If you told me 10 years ago I'd be uh, talking into my cell phone gushing about an Archie comic, I'd probably tell you you're crazy, but Archie has been doing um, great stuff. Uh, this uh, Roberto uh, Aguera, who, who writes this, um, also writes The Afterlife with Archie, which is kind of a like Evil Dead meets Archie mashup. Um, which is kind of better than it sounds and better than it should be. Um, but he really, really knocks it out of the park with uh, The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, which kind of feels like The Omen, Rosemary's Baby, um, The Witch, it, 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 plus Adam's family, because it's got all these family dynamics in it. It's not like, it's, it's not against the characters. It, it holds the, kind of, the characters in, in, in uh, complete respect, uh, but it does new things with these kind of um, Archie Comics staples. Uh, very, very cool. The art is absolutely beautiful. I think it's, uh, um, I think it's drawn and colored by the same guy. Uh, it's um, Robert Hack and it's got a, it's got this kind of, the first arc has this, this overarching villain, uh, Madam Satan, which is another uh, Archie Comics character that they kind of pulled from the past back when Archie Comic was doing horror comics and kind of completely reinvented. It's it's great. And there's um Harrow County is 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 awesome because it it kind of takes its time and it feels like when you when you're reading the trade it feels like you're kind of watching one movie. This five issues of, of Sabrina that's in here, um it feels like a, a complete kind of season of a TV show because there's they pack so much story into each one of these panels. It's really, really great really fun, has some funny bits, has some has some references to other uh, materials, has some references to Bradbury and stuff like that that are almost a little on the nose but work perfectly in the comic book format. Um, very, very cool. It takes itself very seriously and should be taken seriously. Uh, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, that would be my number one pick out of all three of these, which is the, the Ebon Press's new Lucio Fulci um, comic and Harrow County. If you're only going to pick up one, I'd say this, but I think you should pick up all three because they're all pretty boss. All right, um, 
I did want to give a shout out that I am wearing a new black t-shirt. Uh, couldn't go to Scares at Care without picking one up. This is from uh, Pizza Party Printing. Uh, it's a great Night of the Comet design. How could I uh, see a Night of the Comet shirt and not pick it up? It's really, uh, they they do really cool stuff. They have a new I Drink Your Blood one that's that's pretty great too. I guess I'm gonna do a, um, a book uh, recommendation since I try to do a book and a movie recommendation, but count the comics this time as the movie recommendation and the book recommendation for this week is A Disappearance at Devil's Rock by Paul Tremblay. If you've read uh, Paul Tremblay's book last year, it was his big hit, um, A Head Full of Ghosts, uh, which is kind of a is she, isn't she possessed story with a um, family who's having an exorcism on live TV or on uh, reality TV. Devil's Rock kind of takes um, all this kind of creepy pasta, new media, Twitter, um, Twitter, Facebook, um, rumor spreading of like Slender Man and stuff like that um, and, a, and kind of grafts it onto a kind of real world story of a kid going missing. Um, so it's equal parts sad and terrifying. A really, really cool book. Uh, I liked it even better than Head Full of Ghosts, I think. It's probably my favorite of the two. Uh, but if you haven't read either of those by Paul Tremblay, you should definitely check them out. Um, yeah, so there we go. Uh, Harrow County, uh, Lucio Fulci, Zombie Number 1, The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, plus uh, Disappearance of Devil's Rock uh, by uh, Paul Tremblay. Um, I don't really have anything else to pimp other than I, I talked in the beginning about uh, the con season. If you guys can click over there, I'll put the description in the links, uh, or the links in the description. Uh, you can go check that out. If you like this video, please hit like. If you really like this video, hit subscribe. If you really, really like this video, click on my name and go back and watch all the other videos. So follow me on Facebook, Twitter. Um, sign up for my mailing list uh, to see what I'm up to. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good day.